You're listening to the Bonnery Show. It's eight in the evening. Tune in every night at eight to listen to the Bonnery Show on Irish News Radio or ITV.ie. And you can contact anything that you've heard or if anything you'd like to discuss at news at irishnews.net. You're listening to the Bonnery Show. It's Tuesday, so we're talking about Islam and we're talking about growth, growth on Tuesday. Everything to do with Islam is gross, but this is the day that we talk about female mutilation. We'll talk about lives of women and children um, and what their lives is. So today we've gone through female mutilation. We've gone through batchy boys. We've gone through what tying is. We've gone through child brides. So today what we're going to do is going to give you a few people's stories who grew up in Islamic countries as females and their lives. And if people who believe that this can in any way coexist with us is very much fooling themselves. There is no way. I'll start off with Annie. Annie I've known for a good few years now. She lives in America, has many, many fatwas over her head, an amazing, amazing, strong woman. She was born in Iran, Islamic country. At the age of nine, all Muslim females in Islamic countries become what is considered a woman. You get a certificate to say, that you've reached the age. So at that stage, your father can sell you. Anything can happen to you. And anything that you do, you will go to court as a full blown adult. Now you will be raped at that, not that, 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 but that you will ever be stopped because there's no age limit in Islam on children. We've talked about that before. She was raped by her father many times to teach her submission to men and Allah. She was raped by many other men as well. But the time she was 14, she was locked up, locked up 12 times. One time she was sitting beside a man in a taxi, the taxi man, because other people had got in and they'd got out and she was sitting in the front. The moral police, just they're called sometimes moral police or Shira police. They came and they they stopped and they asked and she said, "No, I'm just getting a lift." And he, the taxi man, said, "No, we're having a relation." They were brought into court, and because a woman's word is worth half of a man, they took his word, and he because it's not a crime for a man, but it is a crime for a man, for for a female. She was, she was charged with 75 lashes. Her grandmother was able to buy 50 of them. She got 25. They lashed her so hard, she fainted. She woke up naked. She doesn't know how many times by the by the time she was 14, she was raped by different people. So many times in prison, she was unconscious when she woke up and naked. Her grandmother took her home. She was lashed by the time she was 14, a hundred times for different incidents, things like wearing nail varnish, not wearing the habab, the habab the right way. Her life was absolutely horrific, like most women's in Islam, whether they're in Islamic country or not, these are their lives. By the time she was 14, her father decided to sell her off. He sold her off to an older man. And all this is in the Quran, just in case you think this was a cruel man or there was just a cruel country or culture. It's nothing to do with their culture. It is Islam. It's in every Islamic 
chapter 4 verse 3 he sold her out of interest for 40 for 50 American dollars and opium for one month her father was a higher than an imam he was a sheik so he could do whatever he wanted that all men though anyway are over there the man that bought her used her as a punching bag beat her raped her and re raped her and beat her at the same times by the time she was 14 she had every bone broken in her her body she's still got serious medical issues from the amount of severe beatings she got she went to a court to try and get a divorce with a dislocated shoulder and many bones broken breast lip totally covered up and the judge said what is the problem young lady she was 14 years of age the judge turned around and said if you obey your husband he wouldn't have to beat you she eventually escaped but she was sentenced to death she got out, some people got her out, and she's in America now. But that's just one story. She was lucky to get out. Many don't actually get out. They get, they are stoned to death. There's many of these. There was another girl who was on Instagram, 2018. She was dancing. Um, just dancing. She just put it up for her friends. She got two years and 80 lashes. They lashed her until she was unconscious. A human rights person reported about this to the Western world. She got three years in prison, but she never even got to prison. Her body was found burnt. She was a voice for those who haven't got a voice. There's another lady who said to her husband, her abuser, as many Muslim men are, that she wanted a divorce. He said, you'll never see the divorce day. And he was right. He went in when she was having a nap with the four-year-old child she was having in her, the, the four-year-old child was in her arm. He threw at it. The mother died in horrific pain. The child, was the youngest asset victim when he went to court and said why didn't you take the child from the mother's arms he said he what's the point she would only turn out like her mother the hate that men have in Islam women aren't worth anything so for a man even in the Quran it says he, your boy is worth twice as much as your girl. So this is why men and boys have absolutely no, no respect on females. If people think that this can coexist with us, you are very much either brain dead or very ignorant. This cannot coexist with anything. In Islam, it has. If you, if Muslims, if they turn their backs on Islam, kill them where they lie. Chapter four. Type Muhammad only killed apparently three types of people. One of them were ex-Muslims. He believes that if they turn their back on Islam, they must be killed. This is the life of, for Muslim women, every day, moral police, if you walk down the street and you don't have the habab on you or you don't have, if you have anything that you're showing or that they just decide that you're maybe having too much fun they will come with passions and beat the hell out of you. And when it goes to court, you will be lashed because of the female, your life is not worth anything.
you will be raped many times and sold off. There is nothing. Islam is nothing for women but rape and abuse. There was one lady, 20, she got 20 years for not wearing her habab, her burqa. 20 years of her life in 2018, March 2000, 20 years. That's what will happen to you as a female, the moral police. There's nothing moral about Islam and there's nothing honor about honor killing. There is nothing good, as I said, about Islam. These are a few very, very sad stories. But if you look them up, people put it down as that's their culture, or that's this. It's not their culture. Everywhere Islam goes, whether it's the North Pole, the South Pole, to, to Saudi, to, to England, to Ireland, to wherever, Islam, wherever it goes, it is the same. It doesn't have well, it has no reference on what colour the skin is or what colour their eyes are or whatever. If you're practising Islam, you're practising. Islam was not hijacked by a few nuts. Islam is not just nuts, it's, it's barbaric, it's disgusting practice. It was not hijacked. This is Islam. And it is the same wherever you go. It is the same book practiced by all. There is no such thing as moral or moderate Muslims. Islam is Islam. It is not modernized. It cannot be modernized. It is a barbaric from a man who was a war monger, a child rapist. This can never, ever coexist. This is the most dangerous evil that has ever came to the West. And if you look at anybody who's seen them in the past, like Churchill, anybody who had a cop on to stop it. But now we've so much left as scums that we're not just putting their women in danger, our own women in danger, because they're afraid to question them. So they allow these women wear these sheets over their faces, which most of the time is just to cover the bruises of the, the bruises and the rapes which happen normal. So by these stupid idiot leftist scum thinking that they're helping them, they're actually not doing anything for them. Because a lot of those women don't have a choice whether they can breathe or not. It's the men, their lives are worth nothing. So by saying, oh, they can wear a choice. The choice in Islam, and it's in the Quran, is yes, you can have a choice whether you wear it. Tell her to wear it so she will not be abused and raped. But if she doesn't wear it, then she'll be abused and raped. That's not really a choice. As most choices are known. So she's allowed to be abused and raped if she doesn't wear it. So this is why you see, and even, even women in the burqa are abused and raped. There is no value on women's lives. But they want them in the burqa because it's easier then. It's easier, you don't have to see the bruises and the, and the scars. This is Islam. And those leftists that think that they're helping them by, by insisting that we should all be tolerant and allow it. You're not helping those women at all. The way to helping is to make them dress like us by saying that everybody, and that way, if there is a situation, you can see that she's been battered and bruised. It's to stop eroding our human rights issues to allow their inhuman ways on women and children and stop listening to their bullshit and saying oh well it happens in every country or whatever this happens or it's a custom or it's this it is not it is islam and that is what it is and stop making excuses left to scum need to just back off 
because you're putting their lives as well as everyone else's in danger with your stupidity. Thank you for listening on The Bonnery Show. It's Tuesday on The Gruesome Tuesday, talking about Islam. Thank you for listening. You're listening to The Bonnery Show on ITV.ie or Irish News Radio. Today is Wednesday, so we're talking about Islam. That's not Gruesome Tuesday, so today is Wednesday, the Day of Knowledge. What we will be discussing and breaking down is called something called Matwa or plural Matween. Now, it's a Muslim patrol on the streets. Now, this happens obviously in Islamic countries, but also happens in non Muslim countries. So, we'll go and explain what it is and where it's practiced and why it's practiced. So, obviously. We'll start with the Islamic countries, so it's practiced in all Islamic countries and it's a practice in none. So, and the moral, it's also known as the moral police or the Shira police. It's got many names, but Mutwa is the actual name or Mutween is the plural name. So, um, now it can come from anything from not wearing your head scarf. If you're a Muslim, now we'll concentrate in the Muslim areas first, the Muslim or the Muslim country, the Islamic countries. For not wearing your head scarf, you could be lock, lashed and locked up and put in prison. Daily life for the Muslim majority countries, women, against what they see as Western ways. And Mutwa includes unrelated males if um for say if a woman is in with an unrelated male then the woman will get lashed the male gets off of course um females could get up to 70 slashes where the males get off um also for women not to cover up um if they're not covered the body's not covered up properly it's basically brutality against women and girls also women and arise from from being arrested for photos on Instagram or Facebook or anything like that. So if they're been posing, dancing, anything like that, there is different names for this. Gash Itra in Iran is the name of their one. The, their main focus is rules on women wearing the hijab mandatory for women to cover their hair and body no cosmetics no jewelry um fines and arrests there's women and there's checkpoints for them sudan has brought it in in 1993 public order police they call it basically to enforce sharia law which all of it's to enforce sharia law flogging women mostly uh malaysia Religious police office, they call it, enforcing Shira again. From eating during Ramadan to women being near men. You can get flogged and abused and it's mainly against women. Um, now, if a man's eating Ramadan, during Ramadan, he's more than likely going to get off. But of course, if it's a woman, <laughs> she's probably going to end up with a few broken bones. Saudi Arabia has, they say, up to 4,000 uh, Mutawin enforcing Sharia law. Recently, a story in 2002 15 schoolgirls died during a fire because they weren't allowed to leave because they didn't have the right head scarf and their clo- they didn't have loosely clothes, so they weren't allowed, so they had to burn to death. 15 schoolgirls because the police force. The Mutween wouldn't allow them out. In Tehran, the moral police target women with bad hijab. So even if they're wearing the hijab, but it's seen as maybe too loose or not covering up enough. Um, and they've they've seven thousand of Mutwans. Now they've undercover moral police to crack down on women wearing bad. Hijab, 7,000 on them on the streets, and they're even undercovered, so you don't even know. So you think you're quite safe to so maybe you know, let a bit of air into your hair, hot hair, but
But, oh no, they're undercovered. Now mostly are men, but they have actually women during this as well. So you, you don't you think, God, you could be safe. There's a you know woman there, but that's not necessarily even true. Not even safe there. So from it's a crackdown on women wearing bad hijabs, from fines to fines to lashes, up to seventy lashes. Um, and when the temperature rises, yes, guess what? They bring them out in force just to make sure that those women are not actually having any life worth living. When the temperature rises, the authorities tighten their grip, targets anything from light fitting scarves to tight overcoats to shortened trousers, glamorous hair, walking dogs has been added to the long list that you can get as a woman get locked up and up to 70 lashes and that these undercover i don't would hate to call them police i don't know what you call them undercover or madines i'll give them their, their muslim name because um you really do not deserve the word police because it's far from a police service um so they've undercovered Nuts, Islamic nuts, are in shopping malls, streets, squares, waiting for these women that may have a loosely covered hijab. And basically, the actual, because Islam has such a disrespect and an actual hatred towards women, that these women are beaten up for any reason. Um, now, this gives them an excuse to actually beat the women up, but in general, Women walking alone will get beaten up in these countries anyway, and it, they probably feel it kind of, you know, it's great that they have the excuse to beat them up, but, you know, they'll they'll beat them up anyway. Um, now, this was brought into Iran in 1979. They beat up young girls from nine for wearing jeans. One 14-year-old girl, um, they're beaten up by grown men and grown women from nine years of age because in Islamic texts you become a woman at nine. So grown men and grown women beat the crap out of you. Um, she, this 14 year old girl had a party. She was left with broken ribs, her face bruised um, and covered in blood. The brutality against women in Islamic countries. There are seven, 17 countries in the Middle East and North Africa, all Islamic countries. Saudi, of course, and um, it's, you know, anything from, you know, to make sure there's gender segregation, ser from dancing, Western women's magazines, to movies. And um, this girl who was beaten up um, in Iran for wearing ripped jeans. They're forcing her friend into a car um, of the city of Shiraz, beating them as the girls were trying to get away, punching the girls with force because of ripped jeans. They were released and made sign pledges that they will not wear trousers again. Many had broken ribs, bruises, and, and broken arms, broken eggs, threatened the girls with pepper spray, hitting them. Many other stories, women being sentenced to lashes because of being in a mixed party or dancing. But of course the men get off. No, 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 it's just pure hatred towards women. Um, homosexual, sexuality, adultery, um, parties, no, uh, sorry, so homosexual and adultery carry uh, death penalty. Now we know adultery, as I've explained to you on one of these, on one of the Wednesdays, the Information Wednesdays, adultery is, for a woman is for anything from her husband to say, I told you not to eat that, I told you not to walk out that door, I told you not to wear that, I told you not to step in that area. That is adultery for a woman, it's not what we would know. So this is just again now we'll talk about that's in the islamic country so they're basically beat up girls and let them die in fires and you get them just for general anything any excuse they do like to call it because of sharia law but we'll talk about it's actually coming into the west a lot of european countries now have sharia law 
there's a hundred Shira streets in the United Kingdom where these thugs call. Now they don't have the authorities like they do in, they don't have the government backing like they do in Islamic countries, but they employ themselves. And if you're in the, if you're a Western woman or a Muslim, it doesn't matter. You have to follow their law. So if you're wearing too much of a skirt, they will come and beat you up. They will intimidate you. They will beat a man up with you. They will just jump on you and intimidate you if you're in any of these areas, the 100 Shiraz Street in the United Kingdom, that have now got their own moral place, along with most of the Western countries that have a, a sizable population of Muslims are bringing in or having Shira law where this is enforced. You'll, the first one you will see in Dublin will be South Circular um, Road. And there has been a woman that was pushed off a bike onto oncoming traffic. She was cycling along and a Muslim male, males came along because she was cycling near them. They pushed her on oncoming traffic. There's been stories of girls who wore mini skirts um, and unfortunately she was on her own. Um, no, it was one girl, she was actually beaten up while her boyfriend was there. The two of them were beaten up because she had a mini skirt on. That will be the first Shira store. And then you'll see around where they're building the mosques. And the and the, the stupidity of the Irish thinking that if they write enough letters, they have a complaint now for the Kilkenny Mosque. There's six million apparently is going into that. And they think that some silly letters. You want them to stop, you have to know Islam. You have to fight Islam with Islam. No letter is going to stop Muslims building it. They will create what they want. They have no respect for anything other than their own Shira law and their own ways. They do not respect anything about the West. So then you see that other women, Western women going into Islamic countries are told that you will have to, you have to follow the same laws. Now, if you get caught in these where Muslim women will get lashing, lashes, where non-Muslim women will get prosecuted for not wearing, you know, the hijab. So even if you're in these and you're not a Muslim, you still have to follow the rules. But at least you don't get beaten up and lashed. Um, you will be thrown into jail. You can, can be lashed, actually. I think there's stories of women in, in actually Dubai who was raped. You think, oh, everyone thinks Dubai, a lovely place. But these women have been raped. And foolishly enough, not knowing Islam, and nobody actually explaining it because they don't really they think it's a bloody something to do with their their skin color or they just think it's a religion they don't understand it covers everything islam is it's an ideology it's not just a religion but anyway so they didn't understand this and went to the police to say that they were raped and of course they got arrested for sex outside marriage because there's no such thing as rape in Islam. They'll tell you rape doesn't happen because it doesn't exist. They won't believe that and if you are raped as a woman and you go in, you have to have four men that say that were witness to the rape because you're worth half of a man but even I thought that I don't know why they have to have four and they have to say somebody who was there, four of them, Four males to say that they were there and they saw the rape happening. Now, what four men are going to sit down? Oh, yeah, she's been raped there. That's great, like we saw it. And you have to have the male to actually admit that he raped her. Other than that, she's considered that she's had sex outside marriage, which is. If you're a Muslim woman, you can be stoned to death. But as a non-Muslim woman, you'll get up to about 70 to 90 lashes for sex outside marriage. So you're listening to The Bonry Show um, on ITV.ie or Irish News Radio. Thank you for listening in and I'll talk to you tomorrow about our horrible criminal government again. Um, and as I've said before, None of these would be a problem unless we didn't have a greedy, horrible government. And the reason why we're in trouble and the rest of the West is in trouble is because of greedy governments 
and globalization of the EU and the UN. And that is why Islam is a problem. If we had a government for our own people, we wouldn't, they wouldn't be allowing any of this in. But instead, they're bringing it in. They're not even reporting the rapes on the girls. They're not reporting anything about Islam. The mosques being built. There's a complete media silence while Islam runs amok. It's time to fight back, people. Wake up and fight back. Because this country is for us. Every country in Europe should be safe for women and it will become very unsafe. And these liberal fools that are bringing this in, hope they're all gone first and they will because most of them are stupid and homosexuals. Islam will kill them first. Anyway, thank you for listening on The Bonnery Show, itv.ie. Get involved, contribute to this journey we're taking on. And um, I'm right into ITV.ie, Irish News Radio. Thank you. You are listening to Irish News Radio at irishnews.net. Email news at irishnews.net.